Hey guys, Jonas here from Edge Alerter. So it's day four of the seven day accelerator and today I'm gonna to go through the importance of stake sizing and how that's relevant to uh, this system but also just systems in general, whether it's um, it's embedding or, or finance more generally. Uh, I'm gonna introduce the, the Kelly criterion. There's a lot of detail we could go into there but I'll keep that relatively high level and just talk about kind of the, the key points there that are relevant to what we're doing. And I'm gonna talk about other tipping services as well and kind of the, the, the traps that are easy to fall into and, and things to look out for uh, there because there are a lot of a lot of them around and frankly, 99% of them are, are rubbish. So stake sizing, ultimately this is a question of how much should I be betting per race? Uh, there are a couple of ways to approach this. One is to look at the historical results of this system or any other system. The other way is to use a simulation method. So this is this is the first thing here, the, the historical results. So you can see the results are pretty good. In fact, very good. The profit chart is close to a straight line. There are some bumps along the way, but it goes up and to the right. All these results here, sharp ratio of 20 plus, I mean, that's spectacular if you give that a Google of, of what fund managers out there are trying to achieve of, of 1.2, 1.3, et cetera. Uh, win days, lose days, you know, you can look at all these things and go, okay, fine. But as impressive as it is, there are short runs of bad luck. So, you know, here in this run here, probably lost three, 400, another 300 here in, or, or more in three days. You have these short runs of bad luck. Unfortunately, we can't control that. Uh, there, there are always going to be very similar variants as to what we have here going forward. So we can't control that, but we can manage it through stake sizing. And ultimately, the stake sizing question is about how much should I be betting per race? So, and, and this is really the number one mistake people make. They see this and go, how good is this? And they go half of their betting bankroll on the, on the first tip, and then they bet the rest of their betting bankroll on the next tip. There's a, you know what, there's, you multiply out the probabilities there and there's actually approximately a 20% chance that both of those bets are gonna lose, not even a place. Um, there's big edge in them, but there's about a 20% chance that both will lose. So stake sizing is, when we're talking about it, it's a, it's a question of, of, of trying to achieve two outcomes. One is, how do we maximize uh, the return, whilst secondly, uh, managing the downside. So that's really what we're getting at. So this is, again, historical results method. The other method is a simulation method. So Monte Carlo simulation, it's a fancy sounding name, but really it's about using historical probabilities to, and then running large numbers of simulations to forecast the potential future outcomes that might result. So long story short, without going into too much detail, uh, if you bet 5% of your betting bankroll per race, you're very safe with this system. In fact, you run a thousand runs uh, or a thousand simulations and you're looking at here, max drawdown 50% uh, or just over. Drawdown is the reduction in the portfolio uh, from its highs. So if you had a thousand dollars and you've gone down to say $450, you've just had a 55% drawdown. So this was the second method to, to use, but really these two, the historical results and the simulation method, um, they both really end up in um, really just two core rules that you just need to follow and you'll be fine. And one is if you're betting 5% of your betting bankroll, it's a very safe number. So that's kind of tip number one. And tip number two here, look, stay to, stick with um, a very disciplined approach to bonus bet conversion. It's an important part of this system. So don't Treat that. Treat it. Uh, don't treat bonus bets as if it's just um, f fake money that you know you can just have a free swing at on anything. Uh, on treat it as uh, with the same discipline that you treat having your um, your, your normal bets as well. Um, just one other thing. Just going back to this. This uh, simulation spreadsheet is available to members uh, in the members resources section. If you don't have that um, or you're not a member, send me a message and, and I'll send it to you. All right. So touching on Kelly criteria now. So this is um, it, like I said, start. You can go into all sorts of uh, mathematical details on this, but ultimately, all this, all Kelly criterion, uh, in my view, breaks down into is it's it's really about your assessment of the probabilities 
compared to the market's implied assessment of the probability. So if you think a, if you think something's a two dollar chance, you think it's a fifty percent chance. If the market's got it at two dollars fifty, then the market's saying it's a 40 percent chance. And to to do that calc, it's, it's just one divided by the odds or the reciprocal of the odds. So then it's a question of in that example that I just gave there, 50 versus 40, well, how much do you have? It's a pretty big edge, but you don't want to go all in, um, but you also don't want to bet too little because that's that's a big price dif- or probability uh, difference. So essentially the Kelly criterion um, brings in those two factors and tells you what percentage of your betting bankroll you should bet per race. Uh, so... Here's, here's sort of the general formula for it. Um, here on the right is a calculator that I've, I've used the uh, the core stats of the edge of order system um, to, to punch in some numbers. So the pro, the bookie odds that we generally get, uh, or the, the, the average odds that we get with bookies is $3. So I've just put in $3 here. Our long-term, our system beats the bookies at approximately 2 to 3%. Uh, on turnover if you assume that there is no bonus bet insurance. So what that comes out at is when we're betting on a $3 chance, the market's saying it's a 33% point, 33.3 repeater percent chance of winning. However, we've got a couple of percent on them. So actually the probability of winning is uh, 0.35, so 35%. Now we get a we get a refund or a push. Uh, so what that is, uh, what I mean here is that we get a bonus bet back very close to one third of the time. So the horse will come second or third. So we punch in 0.333, uh, sorry, 0.33 here. Um, when you when you hit uh, calculate there, you'll get a you'll get a recommended stake of 7.1 percent. Now it's actually 28.4 percent because I've put on I've put a a, fra- a different fraction for the Kelly bet. So if I'd if I'd put just a one, uh, it would have said to bet 28% of our bankroll on that, which in, in the professional betting world, most pros bet quite uh, significantly less than full Kelly. So be- there are a couple of reasons for that, but um, one key reason why I suggest doing it here with our system is with this push, it's actually not a full push. That would be... Um, we're getting a bonus bet back. We're not getting cash back. So we're actually, and if we assume 90% conversion of bonuses into cash, we need to be a little bit more conservative here. So essentially, if we're betting a quarter Kelly, um, the recommended stake is 7.1%. I personally recommend uh, 5% as kind of the number. So that's a really high level view on how that works. Um, Feel free to give that a Google and the interwebs do light up. Cool, and then the last thing to talk about today is just other tipping services. So, so there are a lot of them around. Um, not just, and this isn't just relevant to tipping, um, but it's also related to trading uh, services out there, whether it's FX uh, trading platforms or just stock uh, stock market punting uh, platforms. But affiliates are. Huge money makers, not for those who uh, who who bet or trade, but for the ones who uh, connect you as a better with the provider, the betting platform, or the trading platform. <clears throat> so, I'd say greater than fifty percent chance of the tipping service out there have affiliate deals. So what that means is you register. It might be free to join, <clears throat> but they'll get you to join uh, join through a link that basically identifies them as the introducer of you to the bookie or trading platform, <clears throat> excuse me. And what that generally entitles uh, them to is a percentage of your losses. Ladbrokes, Ladbrokes for example, um, has, a, has approximately a 35% revenue share with their affiliates. So what that means, just to give a, 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 an easy sort of example, if, Ladbro- if a Ladbrokes affiliate uh, introduces you as a new better to Ladbrokes, that affiliate is entitled to, they're going to make 35% of the losses of that punter. So the average better in Australia loses about 1000 to $1,200 over their lifetime. So the affiliate's expected to make, call it three, 400 bucks just from one introduction. And obviously if they're introducing 
big losing punters, then their cut is even more glorious. So this it's it's a real big trap. Um, and and the other thing to, to and and what I guess what this means is it's it's a conflict, right? So you you've got a tipping service out there that's saying come in, come, you know, come into this community. It's free to join. Just join through these this link. It's all these bookies. Well, if, what is their interest? What is their actual interest? Well, it's certainly not to help you make money. So, with whether it's in in the in the trading in the betting world or the trading world, uh, there are all sorts of conflicts of interests that are very interesting. Um, so, it's good to be aware of them. A um, couple of other things here: um, most service out there, there's not much transparency. I think transparency is key to to anything. Whether it's uh, your super fund manager telling you how much they've lost you in the last quarter or something in the betting world that's uh, trying to give you or needs to give you some sort of real-time results on what's working and what's and what's not so that you can make a decision as to how do you want to allocate your money. Uh, and the third thing here is true positive or negative edge. So what I'm getting at here is, um, well, there are a few things here, but Pro punters or even, so pro punters are generally trying to make, uh, not trying to make, but they're only able to make, and this, these are the successful ones, they're making about 2 to 3%. So 2 to 3% uh, profit on turnover. So it's a hard game. It's really competitive. So most tipsters out there don't have um, much edge. They're, they're flipping coins at best. So strongly suggest um, if you're out there looking at other services, whether they're in, in this industry or in trading, uh, try and get as much data on, on the historical performance of these systems because uh, most out there don't have any true edge. In, in fact, it's greater than 99% uh, are just flipping coins at best. All right, so that is the end of day four. So day five preview. So we're going to go through some some tools that the intermediate to advanced betters uh, commonly use. It's going to in- include Betfair. Some of you have heard of it. Some of you have maybe even used it a lot. But uh, I'm going to sort of give just a quick wrap of the key things to know there and why it's useful in this industry. Um, oddschecker.com. So this is a pretty useful website to, to be aware of uh, for various reasons. So we'll go through that. Or bet for that was mentioned above. Ghost VPN. So in Australia, we've got some betting laws that don't allow you to bet in the run uh, electronically. So you need to call up. It's obviously a slow process. Sometimes you're waiting two minutes to get a bet on and the opportunity that you've seen has already gone. We can actually get around that law uh, using VPN software. Ghost VPN is very popular. That's what I use. Um, I don't have any affiliation with them. Um, but that allows you to basically just pretend make the bookie think that you're sorry make betfair think that you're in new zealand for example for 20 minutes or 20 seconds and get a bet on live and then just turn it off and you're back in australia Uh, so these are some things that we'll go through uh, on day five so that's it for today any questions i'm usually best to catch on telegram cheers